So I'm driving the new Land Rover Defender. It's supposed to be the most capable and durable Land Rover ever. It's got a lot to live up to. It's got huge muddy boots to fill because the Defender has a proud history of go anywhere adventure and action. How does it go off road? <laughs> I'm about to tell you, so stick around. For even more details on the full Defender lineup, read my yarn at carsguide.com.au. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, hit like, share it with your mates, and make sure you hit subscribe to stay up to date with all of our latest content. There are nine variants, six spec levels, and three engine choices in the new lineup, including two 430 Newton meter diesels and a 550 Newton meter petrol engine. But for this video, I'm focusing on this Defender, the P400 MHEV, that's mild hybrid electric vehicle. It's the petrol variant in S spec. And I'll also be focusing on how the Defender drives on and off road in this video. For all the other details on the new Defender range, interior, exterior, design, and accessories, read my full review at carsguide.com.au. This Defender has a 3 litre turbocharged inline six cylinder petrol engine an 8-speed automatic transmission and an all-wheel drive system. It's a mild hybrid electric vehicle as mentioned, so it has a 48-volt lithium-ion battery and that's aimed at reducing engine load and fuel consumption and it also has a 7 kilowatt electric supercharger and that's aimed at minimising turbo lag. From the ground up, this is an all-new Defender. It's built on Land Rover's new D7X platform, that's X for extreme, so that should give you a bit of a hint. This monocoque body frame is three times stronger and three times stiffer than traditional body on frame setups. That's according to Land Rover anyway. Build as the toughest Land Rover ever made, it looks good. It's undoubtedly a Defender, that's for sure, but it just has softer edges and a contemporary quality about it. But it still has that adventure ready presence. It's a big unit at 5,018 millimeters long, and that's including the rear mounted spare tire and it has a wheelbase that's 3,022mm long. It's 2,008mm wide and it's 1,967mm high. So the Defender's appearance has changed dramatically, but how is it to drive? This is unlike any Defender that has come before. The road handling is super impressive for something that used to be a real punishment to have to drive and to be a passenger in. The comfort levels in the Defender are exceptional. And with that air suspension set at comfort levels, or if you want to get a little bit sporty at a more dynamic level, it sits nicely on the road. It's planted, it's composed, but it still feels comfortable it still feels well sorted out. Throttle response is smooth and even, and you can dig into that 294 kilowatts and that 550 newton meters. Noise vibration and harshness levels are reined in in the Defender. It is a cocoon space, and you really feel insulated from whatever's going on outside. I have noticed some wind rush around the wing mirrors though, but that's not terrible. Steering is nice and light and that's handy for such a big vehicle. And the Defender has Land Rover's terrain response system and it's really quite a clever setup. And the added bonus in this is that you can calibrate the responses, the acceleration response, the traction sensitivity and the diff control to suit your driving and to suit the terrain you're on. It's pretty decent all round. It's got good approach, ramp over and departure angles. It's got plenty of ground clearance. Wheel travel's pretty decent. Uh, that air suspension works really well and stretches that tyre down, gets it to the dirt so you can get a little bit more traction and keep moving. And all round, the four-wheel drive mechanicals and all the electronic sort of wizardry work together. It's pretty seamless and pretty damn capable. Traction control is 
rock solid and that engine you can get that 550 newton meters right when you want it and if you get the urge you can get one of Land Rover's many accessories for the Defender it's got adventure packs explorer packs country packs urban packs and on top of all that you can really cherry pick whatever accessories you want if you want a winch get a winch if you want a bull bar get a bull bar if it's not part of the pack no problem and really the sky's the limit with how you want to set up your defender at speed on a pretty chopped up dirt track it's a revelation the defenders ride and handling are, are so smooth and so composed I, I can't believe I'm in a defender it doesn't feel like it and while its exterior looks have changed a whole lot it looks like a discovery rammed onto a brick and its interior is so plush and nice and comfortable the capability remains and among all of the high-tech wizardry on board the new defender is the PIVI Pro touchscreen system and that's pretty much the heart and soul of the Defender. That's where you, you can cycle through your terrain response programs, you can set your, your modes up to suit you, you can operate pretty much everything from that screen and it's quite easy to use. One of the few niggles I have about this Defender though is while the touchscreen unit is generally pretty easy to operate when you're trying to select terrain response modes the drive modes I've had problems trying to select the mode that I actually want in between sections of terrain uh, it's only a minor niggle and maybe it's just me the the Luddite that I am but for me it just feels a little bit tricky to operate and while all the driver assist tech is unreal and works really well, it's really effective, you almost feel one or two steps removed from what you're driving. It doesn't feel like such a dialed in experience as the defenders of old. That's not to take anything away from its capability, it's very capable, but it just feels a little bit cold, a little bit clinical. The Defender has a claimed maximum unbraked towing capacity of 750 kilograms and a maximum braked towing capacity of 3,500 kilograms. In terms of safety gear, the new Defender has AEB, a 3D surround camera, 360 degree parking aid, wade sensing, cruise control, lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition and more. This Defender does not have an end cap safety rating because it hasn't been tested yet. The P400 Defender's fuel consumption is a claimed 9.9 litres per 100 kilometres and that's on a combined cycle. It has a 90 litre fuel tank. It's covered by a 5 year unlimited kilometre warranty and 5 year service plan with 5 years roadside assist. The new Land Rover Defender is a huge improvement over previous generations but that's not such a huge achievement because those previous generations were pretty ordinary if I'm going to be polite. But that's not the point. This Defender is a massive step in the right direction for the brand itself, but also for four-wheel drives all round. It is infinitely drivable. It is comfortable. It is capable. And that's on and off-road. It's nice to drive on-road. I don't think I'd ever say that about a Defender. And it manages to blend old-school spirit with new world tech. But what do you reckon? Have your say in the comments section below.